Thank you. Um, I'm going to give two talks today. Uh, one is on our experience with Acupulse, which we've had for, I think, about three years now or so. And then we'll talk uh, and specifically about the different modes. Or I'll, I'll de-emphasize the modes so much as emphasize the indications for in our practice. And in the second talk, we'll discuss the M22 platform and our experience with the Resurfix and the uh, Q-Switch handpiece. So uh, a lot of this is you know, background information, um, and the, uh, we, we did some original work with this device um, and back probably four or five years ago looking at the Super Pulse uh, in comparison to Ultra Pulse, and we found uh, a lot of similarities between the two pulse structures histologically, enough so to make me, no, make me realize that there's not actually that much of a difference at, at the energy ranges that we use most commonly in terms of those two pulse structures. So right off the bat, you know, you've got the Ultra Pulse, which we have as well, um, which is at one price point, but the AccuPulse actually can function very well, as I'll show you, um, using the Super Pulse mode, even though you're not getting the same peak power, but you're still getting histologically the same response. Um, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the hand pieces and so forth and what's involved with that. And one thing I like about it the most is, is the interface, actually. So it, it gets confusing with all these hand pieces, so that's one thing I would suggest when you're starting out is get your hand pieces in order and get your staff comfortable with them because it gets a little confusing. Uh, the AccuScan is one thing, but when you're doing the different surgical and incisional hand pieces, you want to have it all arranged properly. Uh, we don't do all of these modes that you'll see here, but we do uh, quite a few of them. Uh, again, I'll probably focus more on the combo mode. We have a lot of experience with that. Talk a little bit about stretch mode and a little bit about the fine touch mode with respect to the feather touch. Uh, has anybody, Feather Touch actually has been around for a long time in some of the other ESC Sharpwood models and Michael. And uh, we use it a lot in a certain subset of patients. Uh, it's, it's fully ablative CO2, so it has some of the downside, downtime with that, but uh, some of the results I just can't seem to get with fractional. So. We use the AccuScan 20 most commonly for most of our, uh, you know, most of our procedures and it's very comfortable to use. Uh, we also use the Surge Touch, so we'll use the incisional handpiece and the F120 and 260 handpieces for the Feather Touch. So, as far as the combo mode goes, again, this is a lot of background information that you already know. Uh, I like the fact that it can happen simultaneously, but you can also do either one individually, however you want to do it. Our indications in our office typically fine lines, wrinkles, periorbital wrinkles, perioral wrinkles, acne scarring, some photo aging, which I typically change for the uh, M22, depending. Uh, settings can be varied independently, so we'll use uh, yeah, we'll set the deep settings potentially more aggressively depending on how, how deep the wrinkles are and then superficial settings depending on what I see uh, in the epidermal changes. So I think dermal and epidermal here. Again, I like the fact that they're simultaneous uh, and so that makes it a little bit easier for numbing purposes. And uh, it, although the spot size is a little bit smaller, I find that I save about the same amount of time doing two passes, uh, doing one pass instead of, say, two with the Ultra Pulse. And this is what the, the different densities look like. I, you know, when I'm doing full face, I'll try to stay as high of a spot size as I can. And I typically vary anywhere between 10 to 20. I, don't, I usually don't go to 25. It depends with the deep. And I usually stay with the square spot size. I use the linear spot size quite a bit when I'm trying to treat the deep furrows of a wrinkle. So that's very good to have that flexibility. Um, more details on that. Uh, the downtime for this typically is, you know, a little bit longer if you're in the combo mode because you're using the deep as well. So I typically tell patients about five, you know, five days or so, five, seven days. And I try to do their treatments in one sitting if I can. So if I can get a little bit more aggressive, uh, uh, I'll do that. But sometimes when I have them come back for a second treatment, it's not for several months because they get benefit from the CO2 for several months after that. Um, this is some of the histology that we did, kind of showing the deep and superficial modes. And so I explained to patients why we need to use a combination laser, because they have dermal, dermal lesions, which are wrinkles, and epidermal lesions, which is the photoaging and epidermal changes. Uh, we, we typically do this with smoke, smoke evacuator, and we, we usually use local anesthesia. It depends on what we're doing with some IM sedation. Uh, you can see the eye shields in place, so we can go all the way up to the uh, the, the Preceptal, uh, preceptal avicularis, uh, and usually a treatment, a full treatment can take you know, uh, 45 minutes to an hour depending on the numbing and how the patients are tolerating the procedure.